I believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to someone. I begin my counting now. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Someone is coming to Jesus. Don't wait for others to come before you follow. Come. Run to Jesus. Two. Are you celebrating them, Ghana? Run to Jesus. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song will be singing forever holy is the lord holy is that though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. And I hope and pray that if and when we are challenged to rise up and pray, we will not be wary. For the Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So we're going to be doing a bit of prayer tonight. And I trust that God will grant us grace in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 7. Jesus was speaking. John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos. And he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. That means the Holy Spirit is always speaking to the church. Are we together now? But there is a kind of ear that an individual must have. In fact, the Bible calls it the seeing eye and the hearing ear. You must sustain that kind of hearing. To be able to comprehend the speakings of the Spirit. Now please listen very carefully. Conferences like these are intended to bring biblical and prophetic perspectives to the happenings around our lives. The happenings around our organizations. The happenings around the nations and the globe entirely. To be able to bring scriptural interpretation to the times and to the seasons hallelujah and then to be able to draw forth solutions from the word of god in fact the biblical character of the prophetic is god speaking to someone already the biblical character of the prophetic is not just in revealing secrets and mysteries and hidden information even though there is a place for that the foundational character of the prophetic is to be able to sustain the eyes and the ears that can draw prophetic insight from scripture and parallel it to the realities that are happening. Are we together? And then also prefer supernatural solutions. Every time kings were in trouble in the Bible, they did not consult economists. They did not consult some sort of diplomats. They went straight to the prophetic. When Pharaoh got up having a dream that disturbed him, he consulted the necromancers, the soothsayers, and said, listen, I understand that as a king, I have had a dream that has a national economic interpretation, implication, and I need someone to give me that interpretation. And until Joseph came, 
The same thing happened with the king in Babylon. The Bible says he slept and had a dream. He woke up and forgot the dream. You would think that he would wave it off, but he knew that there was something prophetic about his encounters. Hallelujah. And he was about to destroy everybody who had a prophetic inclination. They were going to pay the price for not sustaining the intelligence to understand what was happening to the king. And Daniel said, don't be hasty in doing this, please. Allow for some time. Then the Bible says in Daniel chapter 2, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. So more than just prophesying and praying for miracles, and that is wonderful, there is a place for that. It is important for us to be able to scripturally give meaning and perspective to the happenings around our lives, the happenings around the nations of the earth, even at such a time as this. And then, it does not just stop at giving interpretation to the things around our world, we must be able to, by the intelligence of scripture, and then by the ministry of the Holy Spirit, come up with solutions. Are we together now? That you walk out of this conference carrying superior solutions that do not originate from the earth realm. This is the advantage that causes the believers to be revered across the nations of the earth. That we have the advantage of the duality of realms. That even though we are human and we live in material bodies, we can outsource intelligence from a dimension beyond the realm that is scientific. Are we together now? This is very important. So it says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. I'm praying for you tonight in the name of Jesus, that the Lord will grant you access to the hearing ear. That more than the speakings of a man, you will hear the sounds of the spirit. For some of you in the midst of the speakings of men and women of God, you will hear something God is saying concerning your life, something God is saying concerning your ministry, something God is saying concerning the prophetic season. He saw a ladder that connected the earth to the heavens and he saw supernatural things but could not make meaning out of it. He got up and said, surely the Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, this is the gate of heaven. Jacob could not discern the season. And let me tell you, he paid a price for 20 years as a result of not discerning that season. In Laban's house, he paid a huge price. By the time we get to chapter 32 of Genesis, God was going to come again. This time around, he had learned obedience by the things he suffered. He dismissed his wives, his cattle, everything. The Bible says when he was alone, a man and Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Now I know what to do with encounters. That encounters are useless until I am changed by them. I had one. I enjoyed the flamboyancy of the experience, but I was not transformed. This time around, I will not let you go unless something changes about my life. And he says, what is your name? He said, Jacob. He said, thou shall no more be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He called him his name of the place, Peniel. He says, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Again, I pray for you. The mystery of the hearing ear. And the seeing eye, in the name of Jesus who died and rose again, may that grace be released upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. The zenith of the teaching ministry, prophetic and apostolic teaching ministry, is not just um, a discussion of thoughts in an intelligent way. It's more than that. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he began to speak to them. And he said that a grace was given to him. That grace will make all men see. 3 and verse 9. A grace that was given to him to make all men see. There is a grace that can make men see. To see means to perceive the thoughts of God as accurate as it came from his heart. To make all men see. Hallelujah. The second scripture that I want to share with you, and then I'll begin my teaching wherever we stop, that is fine. Scripture number two is Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. 
very powerful and prophetic scripture. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. If you can see it projected, let's read together please. One to read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, uh -huh, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might find hope. You know what this means? That means the Bible went through the laborious process of documenting events, both good and ugly, to the intent that it will mentor the generations coming. It says the things that were written aforetime, the economic hardships that were recorded aforetime, the backslidings that were recorded aforetime, the diligence that was recorded, everything you can think of was recorded in scripture. The diligence of men recorded. The laxity of men recorded. The strength of nations when they feared God recorded. The ill happenings that came upon nations when they deviated from the patterns of God recorded. The Bible says that they were all recorded for our learning. So that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. This is powerful. Everything happening today in Ghana, everything happening today in Africa, everything happening today in the world. The Bible even says in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says the thing that is, is the thing that was. And the thing that is to come, that there is absolutely nothing new under the sun. It may be new provided it is under the sun. That event has its parallel somewhere in history. This should already be a word of comfort to you as an individual, to you as a nation, to us as a continent, and then to the globe. That there is absolutely nothing new. Famine, not new. Death, not new. The reality of demonic powers, not new. The supremacy of the authority and the power of Jesus, not new. The fact that God lifts, not new. The fact that men fall, not new. Everything that you see and will see has a parallel in history. That means even your rising from where you are has a parallel in history. The Bible says he opened the book in Luke chapter 4 that it was given to him the book of Isaiah and he found there where it was written concerning him. Every man must find where it has been written concerning you. And he said this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. If we are together shout a loud amen. amen. So the things that are written aforetime you might be saying, Apostle, you have no idea what I'm going through. I have a question for you. Like Job in the Bible? Or like Daniel in the lion's den? Or like Joseph in prison? What is so unique about your situation that, des that deserves an extra study? There is absolutely nothing. Now, I sympathize with the weight of your situation on you. But I bring you a word of comfort by the integrity of scripture. It has happened before. And people came out of it. So it should plant hope that Africa will rise again. That Ghana like never before will rise again. No matter how bad the economic tide is, I assure you it's not like Samaria, where women ate their children, and yet by a prophetic decree, one man stood, not in a radio station, and said, Tom one, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, that by this time tomorrow, may he turn your mourning to dancing, may he turn your sorrow to joy. It says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream, and... They said among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for us. He says, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Then he says, turn again the captivity of Zion, even like the streams of the Negev. Please be seated. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is to be hallowed, Adonai.
From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Can I give you the last scripture? I hope you are not tired of these scriptures. Hmm. Because you see, our anchor, especially in times like this, is the integrity of the word of God. The Bible says that he exalts his word even above his reputation. His name is a capture of everything that he is. And yet he submitted his name in all its power and diversity. He submitted to the authority of scripture. God is only committed to the believer to the degree and the level to which scripture allows. Are we together? The Bible and scripture represents the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. God cannot be committed to you outside of the provisions that scripture allows. In fact, the assignment of the power of God, the power of God only operates within the jurisdiction of the will of God. The power of God cannot operate outside of the jurisdiction of the will of God. The first assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Seeing then that we need the hearing ear and the seeing eye. Seeing then that the things that are written aforetime are for our learning. The Bible encourages us to stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths wherein is a good way and it says to walk daring and we will enter our Sabbath by so doing. It says you will find rest for your soul. Listen please. You will not find rest for your soul when times change. No. You will not find rest for your soul when governments change. No. You will not find rest for your soul when the climatic condition changes. No. According to the integrity of God's word, entering into your Sabbath depends primarily and principally on your ability to find the old path. And it says, when you find it, walk ye in it. And regardless the government, regardless the season, regardless the climatic condition, it leaves you with an assurance that you will enter your rest. It says, there remained a rest for the people of God. It says that they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not be mixed with faith in them that heard it. He said, today, if you hear his voice, that you harden not your heart like they did in the wilderness. The spirit of the Lord is speaking to us. I'm coming tonight in the spirit of John, which is the spirit of Elijah. To sound a prophetic message to the body of Christ. It is important for us to understand the speakings of the spirit. Authority in the kingdom is predicated upon our access to the mysteries of the kingdom. You need to understand this. Authority in the kingdom is not a gift. Authority in the kingdom is is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. This is the foundation for dominion. You only walk in authority to the degree to which you have access to light. Now, please look up. I would always like to give this example, and I want you to reason with me for a moment. Imagine with me, ladies and gentlemen, a room that has been dark for 10 years. How many years? Then imagine another room that has been dark for one year. Imagine another room that has been dark for one week. And imagine another room that has been dark for five minutes. If you own the lights in those rooms simultaneously, which will come up first? Which room will be lit? All of them. That means no matter how long the darkness, 
no matter how long the situation it only remains until the arrival of light and please hear me the bible says that was the true light that lighted every man that means there is false light it carries a semblance of lifting it carries a semblance of healing it is wonderful to your hearing but it does not sustain any power in the spirit to lift you you must ensure that the light you have is true light but if and when it is true light John 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. In Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, it says arise shine for your light is come. Not because time has passed. Time is not a factor there. You arise and shine to the degree to which your light comes. And it says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. It takes light. It takes light. The light and the power that comes from his word. Hallelujah. Right, so let's have our discussion tonight wherever we stop. Philippians chapter 1. This is where I would like to take my charge tonight as we pray. We'll begin our reading from verse 12 to 19. For the purpose of your record, I'm teaching tonight on the decree of the watchers. The decree of the watchers. Please write it down. And we trust God for grace. Verse 12 to 19. Let me read. But I would ye should understand brethren. That the things which happen unto me. Have fallen out rather for the furtherance of the gospel. He is giving perspective to all the sufferings that he had gone through. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in the palace and in other places reading to 19 and many of the brethren in the lord waxing confident by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear 15 some indeed he says preach christ even of envy and strife and some also of goodwill 16 and one preach christ of contention not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my bonds but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Verse 18. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And I then do rejoice. Yea, and will rejoice. I like verse 19. Let's read together with thunderous voices. Ready? One, to read. For I know that this shall turn. To my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Christ Jesus. Please leave that scripture there. Paul is mentoring the church in Philippi and he's giving them spiritual intelligence. He says, listen, I see that you've been sympathetic imitation. You will call me a disadvantaged person. In fact, you may recommend that I stop preaching the gospel. And Paul said, listen. As far as I am concerned, do not feel bad for me because my victory is shrouded in my intelligence. There are things I know. He's saying it looks like situations and circumstances press hard on me and I seem to look limited in the face of these situations. He says, do not make a mistake of believing I am limited. I know the principles that make for salvation. It is only on account of the gospel that I look weak so that Christ be promoted. But he says, as far as turning things to salvation is concerned, I have found the keys that can turn everything to my salvation. Number one, your prayers. Number two, the supply of the spirit. This shall turn to my salvation. Any negative situation, personally, nationally can turn to the salvation of that nation it says through number one your prayers not my prayers 
your prayers. There is a role that my prayer has to do or to play. But he says, this one is your prayers. And then the supply of the spirit that is of Christ Jesus. Daniel chapter 4, please. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 4, 16 and 17. The decree of the watchers. This was a recapture of the events that happened to Nebuchadnezzar. Let his heart be changed from a man's and let a beast's heart be given to him and let seven times pass over him. 17. He said this matter, this verdict that has been spoken over this king is by the decree of the watchers. And the demand by the word of the holy ones to what intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give it to whomsoever he will and he set it up over it the basest of men. There are many systems of advantage, I call them, that the believer has access to in Christ. And in this kingdom that gives you an edge, an advantage, and causes you to command authority even as you sojourn here on earth. Knowing the mysteries that are connected to the results that we desire becomes the key to our thriving and our excelling even at times like this. The Bible lets us know that every time a believer is faced with a situation that carries a semblance of tragedy, a situation that carries a, a semblance of pain and evil, the Bible teaches that the first response of a matured believer is to understand the mysteries of the altar and the power of prayer. In James chapter 5 and verse 13, Apostle James again was helping the church understand the power of prayer he said is any one of you afflicted the word afflicted there means your life is surrounded by circumstances beyond your control he says the biblical recommendation help me please is let him pray you don't need that understanding to pray it is the prayer that gives you understanding of what is happening that even in the midst of your confusion let him pray. And then he says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much. He now uses an individual to personify the power of prayer. He says Elijah was a man of like passion just like you are. But that he prayed earnestly. Not in company of anyone. Over a territory. And for a span of three and a half years. He says there was no rain. And when it was time for rain, he prayed again. He prayed again. Most believers do not understand the ministry of prophetic intercession and the role that it has to play as far as establishing the purposes of God on earth is concerned. We are a continent that prays. We are a people that prays. We are a generation that prays. But the reason why our prayer is ineffective is because it is largely a product of guilt and not understanding. Hallelujah. The average believer's prayer life is shrouded in mysteries, full of haziness and lack of understanding. We mix everything in prayer and round it up in the name of Jesus and hope that something we have said will find a way of working. And the truth is that by the message of God, results will be produced. But the trouble there is that we cannot come into a place of mastery. Because we cannot even define spiritually what we really did. Hallelujah. And so because believers do not understand the power of prophetic intercession. Nations can go down with believers there who profess to be the image bearers of Christ. We talk a lot about having access to the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen carefully. We talk so much about having access to the powers of the age to come. 
We talk a lot about authority over demons. And yet, our spiritual confessions do not translate to a context that can bring a nation to his knees to acknowledge that there are men and women who fear God. Go and read the book of 2 Kings. The Bible talks about a man called Naaman. He said he was a captain in the Syrian army. That this man was a valiant man. And through him, he brought great victory. But he was leprous. One time at the recommendation of a little slave girl, he went with a letter to the king that there be healing for him in Israel. And when the king read the letter, he said, this is only trouble. You are looking for trouble. Now you're going to say, I did not heal you. And you would come and destroy us again. When Elisha heard it, my God, may God raise men of fire. May God raise men of power. One more time, let history be rewritten on account of the men and the women that will rise from the continent of Africa. Elisha said, let him come. And he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. There is a prophet in Israel. Let me tell you sincerely, I came to challenge us who are going to pray. The world is tired of our English and our explanations, our oratory without results, our spiritual propositions that only end up as a cycle of frustration. There has to be a demonstration of the life, the power, the intelligence of the kingdom here and now. The intelligence of the kingdom that can find expression economically, can find expression politically, can find expression spiritually. By the decree of the watchers, it says, to the intent that all who are living may know that there is a God in heaven. Hallelujah. The ministry of prophetic intercession. Please give us Ezekiel 22 and let's read 30 and 31. Prophetic intercession is a ministry that has been, has been underutilized in our world today. And I hope that I'll say a word or two and then we begin to pray. Please bring three people right now. I just saw a wind. The power of God is coming on three people. One of them with a loud shout to the hearing of everyone. Please, can I have the person here? Please bring them out if you can. Help those who begin to run out right now. The grace for speed is coming on 14 people. Bring them out. 14 people. Help them so they don't injure themselves. Please help them. Help them. Help them. The grace for speed. Help that man. Please help them. Help them. Hold them whether you are an usher or not. The grace for speed. The grace for speed. I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic that every season of delay, hear me Ghana, in the name of Jesus, I stand upon the grace of his eminence and I declare in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, may that season of delay come to an end now, come to an end now, come to an end now. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, I declare every season of delay over my life is someone declaring over my ministry, over the works of my hands. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Are there people who pray here? Shabranda kapakatos katakate, skapa kapra katakata katabakatos, keshane kepas katabaria katabakatos, embra katakatos katakata fraskata, kebranda kaparos, embre katakatas kopakatos kaprakatos. 
By the decree of the watchers, Alanda Shalaga Proskoto Prakato Jekatia, Karekate Palakusia Tabrande Geparia. In the name of Jesus, before you sit down, I want you to shout this after me. Say, Father. One more time. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus, I decree that every negative pattern and every negative cycle over my life, my family, this nation, by the blood of Jesus, be cancelled now. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Be cancelled. You come to an end. In the name of Jesus. This shall turn for my salvation. Through your prayers. And the supply of the spirit. Of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is Jeremiah? I'm hearing a name, Jeremiah. Who is Jeremiah? That's your name? Go and write it. January is your season. God is opening you up to a very, very strange season. You believe that, my friend? Can I pray for you? I stretch my hands. Let everything that represents captivity come to an end. Now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, right now, I bring that season to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Am I wasting your time? Who is Maria? Is it Maria? Maria, what's your name? Your life is about to change, my dear. Look at me. What did you do? Stand up. Because I'm seeing you hold a mic on stage, preaching. Are you a woman of God? Is she a woman? Who knows her? Sorry. Huh? Can you? Are you a woman of God? That's what. Can I pray for you? Listen. The dimension of grace you will begin to see in your life will surprise you. A, a very strange healing grace. I stretch my hands over you right now. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Let it be a new season for you. In the name of Jesus. Healing to the nations. Even through your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kofi, K-O-F-I. Is it Kofi? Is that Kofi? Please don't come out at random. Don't just come carelessly. We'll be seated shortly. I'm just flowing as the Spirit of God. Remember, you came here with hunger. You came here with hunger. What do you do? There is a very strong impartation that is coming on three of you. There are many, but three of you right now. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. A very mighty fire. You are stepping into another dimension. This prophetic intercession I'm talking about, there is one of you. You are carrying that grace. I stretch my hands right now like the dew of heaven. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, drink of that well. In the name of Jesus drink of that well. You will speak the purposes of God across nations. In the name of Jesus Christ, kings will depend on your hearing and your speaking. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please pray one more prayer. Say, Father, the mantle and the grace for the next level of my assignment, release it upon me. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray.
Someone pray. Shabelekatos kopra teke parusiata. Shagran teke paraskotiata. That which makes for my efficiency in the spirit, I obtain by faith. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please be seated if you can. Let's see how God will help us tonight. If they are still under the anointing, just let them be. When they are strong, they can get back to their seats. Please pay attention. We are discussing the dynamics of prophetic intercession. Helping believers know the mysteries that have been allocated to change the tides, the spiritual, political, economic climate over nations, families, territories. The young boy Jeremiah, when he was receiving a revelation of his call and his mandate, in Jeremiah chapter 1, when you read from verse 5, it says, while you were in your mother's womb before you came forth, I called you, he says, and I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. And he said, no, I am young. And he was rebuked immediately. He says, do not say I am young, but whoever I send you to, and whatever I ask you to say, thou shalt say. And he says, see, this day, I have raised you over nations. So Jeremiah was given that prophetic ministry of spiritual oversight over nations. Let me just say this very quickly. There are three levels of authority that the Bible teaches. Please, I want you to listen. The first, which is the least level of authority in the spirit, is authority over things. Authority over things. Money, physical things. Surprisingly, that is the least level of spiritual authority. The second level of authority is authority over nations where God makes you the one who helps to define the civilizations and the realities of nations. The third and the highest level of authority is authority over God's program. God can commit his program and say for the next 10 years, this is what I'm doing in Ghana. And you are the one I put in charge of that program. It is the highest level of authority and trust God can give a man. Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Seeing that he will become a great man, a great nation. Hallelujah. Jesus said a lot about prayer. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, the Bible says he spake a parable to the end or the intent that men provided you are a man there is a mandate upon you that men ought always to pray please listen carefully and not to faint hallelujah in first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 he says to pray without season to pray without season hallelujah in acts chapter 12 peter was bound and they were ready to kill him, having beheaded James. And, you know, it pleased the people. And now they had caught Peter, about to destroy him. And the Bible says they kept him with four quaternions. He was in the prison, and yet bound hand and feet. Go to verse 5. 12, 5. Acts 12. It says, Peter therefore was kept in prison. Please read the remaining part for me. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. For who? By the church. You connect this with Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. It says to the intents that now unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the multifaceted dimension 
of the wisdom of God. That includes the wisdom and the mystery that is hidden in prayer. That a man had been bound, ready to die, but the church said no. We may not be in government physically, but there is an advantage that we have. It says, but prayer was made by the church unto God for him. Hallelujah. There is power in prayer, even prophetic intercession. Now, I'm not giving us a whole discourse. This is a ministry that is rich in understanding, especially when it has to do with the matters of prayer and intercession. But let me tell you this. Prophetic intercession and the ministry of the watcher is predicated upon two foundations. Please write if you're writing. Number one, your love for God and your love for people. This is the first foundation of a genuine prophetic intercessory ministry. Not your desire to see results. Above and beyond your desire to see results. Genuine prayer prophetic intercessory ministry. The ministry of the watcher is founded upon this understanding that you love the Lord and you love his people. Are we together? Love must be the principal motivation. Any other thing that precedes as a motivation will only worry and corrupt your prayer life. Please listen carefully. Genuine Bible-based prophetic intercessory ministry that commands power to change the tides over families, over businesses, and over nations must be born out of love for Jesus and love for his people. If you love Jesus and hate his people, you are in error. Are we together? Number two, for sake of time. The ministry of the watcher is founded upon number one I said your love for God and for people number two the second foundation upon which the prophetic intercessory ministry is founded upon is called the principle of shared dominion please listen carefully if you do not understand this you will live a frustrated life as an intercessor and as a watcher. The principle of shared dominion. Now please look up. There are two dimensions of dominion as the Bible teaches. The first is called absolute dominion. Absolute dominion is the kind of dominion that God himself has. Does not need any man. It is not derived from any man. Are we together? Man was given dominion according to Genesis 1, 26 to 28. But the dominion given to man is not absolute dominion. The dominion given to man is shared dominion. That means it is derived from our relationship with God. We cannot walk in dominion in isolation to the God of the Bible. It is through our union and our partnership that we have that dominion. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Give us from Amplified if we can have that. Is someone learning tonight? Ephesians 6 and verse 10. It says, in conclusion, do we have it here? Be strong in the Lord. Watch this. It says, be empowered through your union with him. That is where your authority and power comes from. Your union. It says, draw your strength from him. The strength which his boundless might provides. If you want to understand the kind of dominion that was given to man, you have to understand the mystery called marriage. You see, because the moment a woman gets married to a man, according to scripture, that everything that man has becomes her own. Is that true? As far as stewardship is concerned, however, there is still a condition like it was adumbrated in the book of Esther where Vashti forgot that Vashti was a type of the fallen man. She forgot that her authority as queen was because she was married to the king. And when she built an empire
is For God and his people, number two, on this mystery of shared dominion. The moment God said, let them have dominion. He said, the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. Do you know what that means? By reason of that, that declaration, God bound himself with that verdict. It becomes scripturally incorrect for God to veto man. And step into the earth and do anything. He will always require the participation of man. Even when God wanted to save men. He didn't come as God. He had to become man. Through the womb of a virgin. That means if God wants to change Ghana. Please look up. As powerful as the will of God is. There is no guarantee that just because God wants it to happen, it will happen. There are many instances in the Bible where the will of God did not come to pass. And the explanation is a corruption, a mismanagement of this dominion principle. Until you understand this, you will not know the value of the ministry of the watcher. When you understand the ministry of a watcher, you can stand and make decrees and shift the spiritual, economic, political climate over territories. Let me tell you the truth. I believe that before Jesus returns, Africa will present to the world the biblical, apostolic, and prophetic portrait of what it means to be prophetic intercessors. This I believe. That in our lifetime, we will see it. It's a time will fail me to talk of men like Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. Women who received their dead back to life. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Ezekiel 22, 30. God is raising someone tonight. And God is giving you perspective. Waiting for time to change the situation of your family is a waste of time. That kind of knowledge is an attack itself. If you find yourself thinking like that. In Nigeria we say one day go better. Absolute nonsense. That is a sociologically comforting statement. But it has no biblical basis. If anything, time never changes anything. Time only reveals. It takes engaging with understanding in the realm of the spirit. He spoke to Job. He says, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof upon the earth? Why is God bringing this prophetic message? Ghana, your rising will depend more on more than the government. Your rising will depend on more than economic intelligence. There have always been times in history, ladies and gentlemen, where it takes more than economics. It takes more than the wisdom of men, Sophia. There must be the emergence of men and women who understand the mysteries of the altar and know how to transact business with the realm of the spirit and purchase dimensions of reality and transport them to be made manifest in the physical realm. 
Ezekiel 22. I sought for a man. I sought for a man in Kumasi. I sought for a man in Volta region. I sought for a man among them. They don't all have to be interested. But I'm finding that man. I sought for a man that should make up the hedge and stand in a paracatos kati brega teke paya shani marado siata as I'm speaking right now the mantle of a bridge a bridge a bridge builder is resting on someone for your family help them please don't let mama die like that some of our loved ones are in spiritual ignorance what then is the excellency of your coming to church what then is your, the excellency of your being mentored if you do not know how to stand as a spiritual bailout system don't fold your arms and let darkness continue to prevail hallelujah please hear me pay attention the grace of a bridge builder you are, you are hearing me as I'm speaking that anointing is coming on people if it comes on you just know that there is a mandate upon you to raise your family out of that situation I'm saying it by the Spirit of God and while I'm preaching just bring them out carefully don't distract but you need to listen please hear me for some of you here I'm speaking to you by the Spirit the salvation from your family as programmed by God was supposed to happen since 2017 but when that time came there were no watchers and prophetic intercessors to bet that and so time continued to go it looks like God is unfaithful but God is ever faithful it is the bankruptcy of men and women who can like the men of Issachar understand the times and to know what Israel ought to do Oh, Spirit of the Living God, find men. Find men in this place tonight. Find men. Find men over families. Find men over ministries. Find men over businesses. Men who will stand in the gap. Watch this. Let's finish that scripture because we're going to pray. I sought for a man. Someone shout, I'm available. One more time, shout it. With faith in your heart, I'm available. It says, I sought for a man among them. Who are the them? Your siblings. Who are the them? Your family members. Who are the them? People in Ghana. Who are the them? All the people that belong to your organization. God is still seeking for men that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. What a tragedy. But I found none. Abraham, the friend of God, held on to the hands of God and said, Please, before you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, what if you find 40 righteous men negotiating that I hope you know that it was not the angels that saved Lot. It was a transaction between Abraham and God. The angels went in response to a finished transaction. For someone here, the devil is about to take your mother, your father, and you are watching no discernment, no seeing eye, no hearing ear. The devil is programming disaster to destroy your church and your ministry. And you are just watching with the eye of the flesh. May you rise tonight to a level like the eagle where you can see from an altitude. For some of you, you come from families where no one has risen. Nobody has been able to rise. According to Zechariah chapter 1, when you begin to read from verse 18 and 19, it says, Son of man, 
What seest thou? And he said, I see four horns. That these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Israel, against Judah, and against Jerusalem. So that no man doth lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Where are they tonight? Where are the carpenters who will rise up and say, this course, it ends with me. In the name of Jesus, this tragedy, failure in ministry, it must end with me. I sought for a man. It is my desire to bring salvation to Ghana. It is my desire to bring salvation to your family. It's my desire to end this plague of barrenness among women in the family. It's my desire to end this plague of untimely death. But where are the watchers who will make decrees? By the decree of the watchers, the heart of a king was turned to the heart of a beast. Imagine what else can be done, even by the decree of the watchers. When I came in here, by the privilege of His Eminence, the Archbishop, I had the opportunity to just meet briefly with a group, a team of very vibrant, fiery, prophetic intercessors. Oh, they are here. Blessings to you. Let's give them a big God bless you. And when I got there and I saw these gentlemen and their zeal for prayer, I said, my God. Let me tell you the truth. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. If you have an attack on your finances, an attack on your health, and an attack on your prayer life, start dealing with your prayer life first. Because no matter what else you solve... If your prayer life dies, you are pouring water in a basket that has holes. Men and women of God, please hear me. The reason why we are not able to see power, genuine power. This is beyond falling down and standing up. The power that shifts the spiritual climate over the lives of our membership. Over governments, over institutions. God cannot trust you with the destiny of a generation when your spirit man is weak. No capacity. I say this not with any sense of sarcasm. You stand before people and you can sense how weak their spirit man is. No, 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 sir. For someone, God brought you here tonight to fan the coals of your prayer life. The excuses are over. All the excuses you are giving is because I have a job. No! Don't allow that excuse. You will destroy those connected to your destiny. I believe that there are women here tonight that will rise up in the spirit of Deborah. Women who carry power and the grace to change the spiritual climate over nations. Ghana, I say it to you again. If there is anything in your nation, politically, economically, that you think is going wrong, you will be joking to depend on the government alone to change it. I don't care what party and I don't care what it is. You will be joking to believe that your parliamentarians alone, respectfully with all the intelligence and the resourceful people here, it will take more than that. There is a decree that Ghana has been waiting for. We have come tonight to make those decrees. It's called the decree of the watchers. Not the decree of men that pray. Uh -uh. A watcher is more than a prayer warrior. A watcher is one who has mastered the dynamics of the altar. With the eyes that see and the ears that hear. Families, it's time for you to stand on behalf of Mama. Lord, she will not die. Uh -uh. Say, present your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. Hear me? Every spirit that followed anyone here, I just saw something in the spirit. That's why I want to declare. 
Manike Brekete Katos. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I decree and declare tonight every spirit that is not of the Christ hunting down any destiny here at the count of three I want everyone to shout that name Jesus are you ready now one two three shout Jesus I command that spirit go now go now leave their destinies by the blood of the eternal covenant In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, please lay your hands on your head. Shout this in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that in this season, the glory of the Lord upon my life is showing forth. Turn it into prayer. Turn it into prayer. The glory of the Lord hidden in my life is time for it to be revealed in Ghana to the intent that men and women will know that there is a God that rules over the affairs of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please hear me. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of studying a bit about revivals, territorial revivals. I've had the honor of meeting a few people that we call revivalists in their lifetime before they went to meet with the Lord. I can tell you this, wishing that territories will change is a total waste of time. Wishing that a family will change is a total waste of time. There are controlling powers over families. There are controlling powers over ministries. There are controlling powers over assignments. There are spirits from hell sent to assignments, not people, assignments. If you are Elijah, Jezebel is coming. There are spirits that are sent. But hear me, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to know tonight that there is a decree that the realm of the spirit has been waiting for to come out from your spirit, man. And as that decree is uttered tonight, listen to me. Many of you this night, before tomorrow by the night session, the climates that would have shifted in your life will surprise you. Hear me. I'm prophesying to someone here tonight. You will go to bed tonight and the mysteries behind your destiny will be open to you like the pages of a book. Why is this church not growing, oh God? Shabakatos kiata, rakatos kiata. What is this with the spirit of poverty that is resting on this family and will not allow the beauty and the glory of heaven show forth? Listen, you need to get angry tonight and say enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I hold on to the horns of the altar. Rakatos kaprate keparakos yata. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Did your Bible not say why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing that the kings of the earth set themselves against God and even his anointed? Are we together? To cause all kinds of evil and mayhem. He says, but the Lord shall look and from heaven he shall laugh. You want to know how mighty God is? Partner with him in the place of prayer. Lend your voice as a watcher and watch the power of God move over your life and your situation. Is any man afflicted? Let him 
pray. Is any family afflicted? Let them pray. Is any ministry afflicted? Let them pray. Is any business afflicted? Let them pray. Is any destiny of color afflicted? Let them pray. Is any marriage afflicted? Let them pray. Let them pray. Let them pray. Now hear me. Paul said, don't forget our text. Philippians 1, 18 and 19. I know that this shall turn to my salvation through number one, the prayer. We are only dealing with one tonight. That is not everything. Your prayer and the supply of the spirit. By the way, let me encourage you. I want you to go around Ghana and call everybody you can find. Tell them fire is burning in this place tomorrow. Hallelujah. If there is no space, even if you are going to sit on the roof, we'll make an arrangement for you. Listen, call your loved ones, politicians, government, what everybody, especially for those you know, affliction has a signature. You can see it in the life of people. It says, John 10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Please help that gentleman. It says, but I am come that he may have life, and that he may have it more abundantly. The woman in Luke 18 went to the unjust judge who did not fear God nor regard man, the Bible says. He said, avenge me my adversary, and for a time, the king would ignore her. The Bible says, but for her, the judge, it says, but for her importunity, her persistence, because there is a law in the spirit that for everyone that asketh, he receiveth. Everyone, not some, everyone. There are things that are long overdue over my life and your life. Long overdue. It's time to bring them to bear. There are ministries in Ghana. The mantle that is upon you is beyond Ghana. But you are still like Gideon hiding. It's time to take that lead of you. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, these are the mysteries in the kingdom we engage for the glory of God to be made manifest. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Moses commanded the people and said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. The glory will not just appear. There are things to do. Man of God, it's time to stop powerless ministry of giving all kinds of excuses, watching demons make a mess of the name of Jesus. I'm not being hard tonight. This is from a heart of love. That there are men and women after this conference who will stand by the spirit. Not in arrogance but led of the spirit. From the weightiness of their stand by the altar. And say this time tomorrow. Over families. You will shift climate. Don't say it is inheritance. That's how it happens to everybody. Remember I leave you with a message tonight. God is searching for a man. God is searching for a man. He's not searching for a man of God. He's searching for a man. Women, it's time to arise. Don't allow the devil destroy your destiny and destroy the nation. Mothers, I hope you know that you have a prophetic ministry in the realm of the spirit. There is a space for the speakings of a woman in the realm of the spirit. It's in your Bible. When women cry, they can shift heaven. God is counting upon you, Ghana. Please hear me. The solution to Ghana's problem, Nigeria's problem, Africa's problem will not come just from people for, from a foreign land. It will be men and women who are rising here. I can tell you 
by the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of traveling a bit. And as I go from nation to nation, stirring the fire of revival, I am burdened again with the need for the rights of men and women who can partner with God. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Wherever you want to go, Lord, you can go through me. For I'm yours, Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Please hear me. We're about to pray and then we'll wrap up for the night. Somebody's destiny is depending on your spiritual seriousness. Somebody's longevity is depending on your ability to understand the mysteries of the altar. Do not let one more person die because of your carelessness. Do not let one more family cry as though God were not alive. You are the representation of the power, the glory, the wisdom of God to a generation, to a family. Don't allow the businesses in Ghana go down. Whereas the mandate for their rising. Do you think Jesus just left heaven and came to the earth? Ask Anna the prophetess. The woman who understood the, ask the, the mysteries of the altar. And for 60 years, she stood and held on to the altar. And cleared all the forces until Jesus arrived. When she saw him, she said, now let my soul rest in peace. I have seen the consolation of Israel. Can I tell you, dear intercessor, in your lifetime, you will see heaven kiss the earth. In your lifetime, you will see the birthing of the prophetic seasons that have been settled in the realm of the spirit. I made up my mind as a covenant that if it depends on me, the program of God will not fail. No. If it depends on me, will not fail. If every home from tonight, let me challenge the men in one minute respectfully. Every man here by God and by God's prophetic mandate, you are the priest of your home. Let me tell you the implication of that. There is a mantle upon your head whether you are using it or not. That can translate the pain in your family. To become salvation. I challenge every man in Ghana. It's time to arise. Forget about the days you may have wasted. In laxity. Tonight hear a prophetic clarion call. Arise for the sake of your children. Don't complain about what you are seeing. Change it. Access power in the heavens. Access power in the heavens. Men do not transact business of destiny in the earth realm. Satan took Jesus into an exceeding high mountain and began the negotiation there. He says, all the kingdoms of this world and their glories, he showed him. He said, it's been given to me. Bow to me and I will give you. Destiny transactions are not physical. You do not use the Naira currency or the dollar or euro. No. You use weightier things like blood and sacrifice. These are the matters. These are the, the, the currencies that we use to transact destiny with. Unfortunately, unbelievers and those who serve the devil understand this. And they keep reprogramming climates. And we believers continue to be victims. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven. And canst thou establish the dominion thereof upon the earth? Transactions were happening in the heavenlies. And Job was in the earth. He did not participate. He was only a victim. When I read the book of Job one time, I made a vow. That no transaction over my destiny will happen in the realm of the spirit without my participation. No way. 
I will not be the victim of the conclusion of realities that happen in the heavens. If it concerns me, my say and my impute must be part of it. And my impute is that which the word of God says should be. The weapons of our warfare, he says, are not carnal, but mighty through God. Are we believers here tonight? To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination, is the Greek word yes, sir, and bringing every knowledge to the obedience of Christ. Let's pray for a few minutes and we'll end tonight. Will that be fine? Please rise up on your feet. I sought for a man. I sought for a man over that church. I sought for a watcher. I have had the speakings of men. I have had the lamentations of men who are bankrupt of spiritual intelligence. But I need to hear the decree of a watcher. I need to hear the speakings of one who has had power with God. Men who understand the mysteries of the altar. Please hear me. Lend me the next five minutes of your destinies, ladies and gentlemen, as we pray in this place. And I want you to believe and I agree by faith for you and standing upon the grace of his eminence. I want us to believe that God will shift some things in the next five minutes. Do you agree? I am convinced that from this conference and even tonight, God himself is going to be birthing realities that will speak even over the entire nation of Ghana. We are sending decrees right from this place by the mystery of the four winds to the ends, the length and the breadth of Ghana. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. There are ministries that will rise from tonight. There are families that will rise from tonight. There are nations that will rise from tonight. Is someone ready to pray? In the next two minutes, I'd like you to pray in the spirit. Clap your hands and pray. Please give your destiny dedicated focus as you pray. Go ahead and pray. Shakra de Caparusiata, Mande Braske, Kelanda Braska de Belecatosia Catabrande Gabaratos. Someone is praying. Shakra de Cascaparando Shigadiata Cosa Bracasia. I Napasha Nabasa Branda Gadabella de Bacatosh. Crata Catabrata Catabrata Catola Catabrasca Pedacatosh. Embrata Catabrando Soso Bacatosha Fragate Cascaria Dabata. Someone is praying. Right to the back. Make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. This is for your destiny. This is for the program of God. We are bridging the gap through the power of prophetic intercession. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, please hear me. Paul was speaking and he says, there is, as it were, many voices and none of them is without signification. That means creation was designed to respond to certain sounds and until they hear that sound, they are not compelled to respond. There is a sound that means darkness come to an end. There is a sound that means victory be established. There is a sound that means delay come to an end. There is a sound that means firstborns arise. There is a sound that means witchcraft. You perish once and for all. I don't know what sound you need to raise. But for the next one minute, open your mouth and begin to decree. Open your mouth and begin to decree. Thou shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you.
Hallelujah. Can we take a few prayer points now? Shout this. Say, Ghana. Hear the word of the Lord. One more time, shout it. Say, Ghana. Hear the word of the Lord. We declare and we announce a new prophetic season. Go ahead and begin to pray. We declare over the nation of Ghana. A new season. A new economic season. We decree and declare. A new season for the gospel. A new season for advancement. Hallelujah. Let me give you one more prayer point for sake of time. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare. Over my life. My family. And my destiny. Every manipulation. Of darkness. Against my life. My family. My destiny. Right now. Tonight. You come to an end. Open your mouth and pray. 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 Hallelujah. Hear me. Everything connected to ancestry. Everything that has found expression by the mystery of the bloodline. I stand here tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm declaring over someone's life. By the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. I nullify all ordinances now. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. I want to request for permission from his eminence if he will allow. At his permission, I will want everybody here to come with a list of everything you are trusting God for. Will that be fine, sir? So, please hear me. Listen to instructions. You are coming here tomorrow and you are writing everything that has mocked God in your life. Everything that has defied, you have prayed, you have fasted. Listen, you see, solutions happen at the instance of mysteries. It says, it has been given unto you, Matthew 13, 11, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Victory does not just happen just because it is finished in Christ. It is established experientially in the life of the believer through light. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so, as you are coming tomorrow, number one, please begin from tonight. I want you to invite everybody you can find. And tell them, fire is burning here. Tomorrow will be like Mount Carmel in this place. If God be God, let him be God. If Baal be God, let him be God. But as surely as the Lord lives, the God that tomorrow will answer by fire. Hallelujah. So please hear me. For your loved ones who are, are far off, in the US, in Europe, you can write, they can write their request and give it to you. And I believe that um, the media ministry of this, this ministry, please send a link for people so that they can send in their prayer request. By the privilege of God's grace, we are going to collate everything. Just a moment, please.
Hallelujah. Now, I've, I've received permission and um, a request from His Eminence that tomorrow, as much as possible, corporately, we are going to be fasting. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know what time they would be allowed to break, sir. Is, is there any time? Okay, so please everyone who are fasting and all who are connected to this ministry, connected to this vision, the sons and the daughters of the prophet, I want us to know that we are fasting tomorrow. There are matters we are dealing with in this place. Family issues, individual issues, and national issues. Hallelujah. So please participate in it. I want you to obtain grace from God. Don't just fast and sleep and wake up by five. Obtain grace. If you do not worship, study, and pray, you did not fast. Hallelujah. Let's obtain grace from God to be very serious. Let's lend our destinies this kind and this level of seriousness. And watch what the God of heaven, the God of wonder will do. Hallelujah. When you are coming, please make sure you come with your prayer request. And for those who will not be able to make it, please do well to collate their request. And let's trust God to move in a very mighty way. Tomorrow, Jesus is going to be healing the sick in this place. Long-standing issues of captivity must give way in the name of Jesus. I trust the Lord that there are ministries that are not yet rising to their full prophetic potential. In the name of Jesus, God is granting us the grace to lift that lead over the work that has been committed to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. But for tonight I declare, may the Lord God of heaven who lifts men bless you. I stand in partnership with the grace upon his eminence and I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead as a result of the meetings past and even tonight I say to you again access power even with the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ everything that represents shame and reproach in your life it bows to the lordship of the Christ tonight for some of you, before the session tomorrow, you will only return with testimonies. Because what God would have done in your life will only leave you in tears of joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. In the name of Jesus. Um, well, tomorrow I'm going to make that call. But one of the things that I want to challenge you, and please listen to me. I'm saying this because I fear God and I love you. Let me challenge everyone here under the sound of my voice. It is a principle that I practice, especially at prophetic moments like this. Not by coercion, but by revelation. I want to challenge you that among the many things that you come with tomorrow, I want you to go and stay with God and let him speak to you. Trust God to come with a seed. Hallelujah that you are going to connect to this work. If you don't believe it, don't do it. This is, please don't, don't, do. whenever we talk about, it's so terrible because in Africa, we have, we have made a mess of giving and sacrifices. So every time people talk about things like this, um, people carry it in a bad light. I tell you the truth, I love you too much to not, to lie to you and just because of trying to protect my reputation. These are the things that we have done and we keep doing. Genuine, authentic prayer that prevails in the spirit is not without sacrifice. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. I'm giving you time tomorrow so that you will think. Even though I'm the guest invited by the privilege of God's grace, I came with my understanding with this sacrifice. That's why unfortunately for many men of God, we preach and it does not work in our lives because we only tell people to do it and then we do not do it ourselves. So let me encourage everyone with revelation. If you bring money as a bribe to God, you are only wasting your time. It will not happen because God is not, is not playing 419. No, 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 it's not doing that. It, revelation and understanding is what gives your activities credence and power in the spirit. Are we together? 
There are people who just give whilst they hear seed, they make transfers, they give, and that is wonderful. But your seed can become a weapon. A weapon. If you have understanding. So I charge everyone, go back tonight. There are ministries you are trusting God to end certain seasons like Cornelius. You are trusting God to bring certain things to end. Come with your prayers, but then in your heart, I want you to come prepared with a sacrifice and say, Father, with understanding, I am connecting this to bring to an end certain seasons in my life. Hallelujah. Do we believe that? Are we in agreement over that? Praise the name of the Lord. So tomorrow, I'm sure that God will grant us grace as we pray, we watch the power of God and opportunity is going to be given to you to do that with understanding. I can tell you moments in my life where it was by the power of sacrifice with understanding. Seasons were introduced or redefined in my own life. People do not rise by mistake. We climb upon the mysteries of the kingdom, even to heights unimagined. May God grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. I decree that you are blessed. You remain blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Higher levels of grace, higher levels of intelligence in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands together for Jesus. The Lord bless you. Let's celebrate the goodness of the Lord with a big, big, big clap and a shout. Let's celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Are you blessed? Are you not blessed tonight? Give Jesus a big, 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 big clap. Somebody shout hallelujah. Please want everybody to wait behind as we prepare to close this service under this prophetic atmosphere, under this special grace, under this unction, I want each and every one of us to prepare our heart to give our offering unto the Lord. Giving is a matter of the heart. In Exodus chapter 25 verse 1 and 2, Exodus chapter 25 verse number 1 and 2, giving is a matter of of the heart. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, verse 2, speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. With everyone that giveth willingly with his heart. So giving is a matter of the heart and it's a matter of willingness. Under this atmosphere, under this grace, under this prophetic power, I want every one of us to package a special offering according to your hearts.